I look at design as a, as a tool that can really be world changing. And so in the last 10 years, I've been focusing mainly on projects which are related to sustainability. And three years ago, my colleagues and I set up Department 22. What we do is we are predominantly designers in our team. So we use design as our main tool. We're driven by sustainability challenges and problems, but we like to see them as opportunities uh, for interventions which, in, which can really improve things around us. But today, I want to focus on, digesti uh, on uh, dissecting, <laughs> <coughs> dissecting those food systems. And I'm going to actually dissect something here today. Staple food that we all have pretty much every day. A sandwich. <coughs> the shell. It's made of plastic. And we all know plastic is really bad, right? Anyone disagree with that? I kind of disagree with that, thank you. I think plastic, you know, 50 years ago we said plastic, fantastic. It was the kind of big thing that really changed our lives. The problem is that we design it in the wrong ways and we use it in the wrong ways, especially single-use plastic. Although recycling is good, it's not ideal, but the worst thing that can happen is that it can end up in landfill or even worse, in the oceans. It's harming our whole environment, so it's killing animals, it's destroying nature, wildlife. This is an image, by the way, of all the plastic that was found in one bird's stomach. It's horrible. You think that's really sad, but you should think further and think that's actually ending up in our stomachs as well as microplastics that we eat through fish. But in this talk, I don't want to talk too much about problems. I mean, I do want to address them, but I also want to talk about some solutions. This is one of my favorite examples of a circular design solution. This is called Cup Club. Instead of taking it disposable cups, you can take it in one of these um, plastic cups, but they are reusable. And there's a whole product slash service that goes along with it. So you take it in one shop, you can drop it off at certain points in, in the city, and then it gets washed and reused, and it can be reused something around 150 times before it has to be recycled. Without looking at products as waste, but as nutrients for something else. So it's all keep keeping all of our resources in circulation for as long as possible in many different ways. And actually, it's mimicking what nature is doing. We are probably the only beings on this planet that have waste. Let's look at the bread. Bread. It's a staple food of many of us. We love it. But the real thing I want to focus on here is specifically the sandwich industry and the problems around that. Almost 50% of bread that's produced never gets eaten. That's crazy. That's really, really shocking. Next in our sandwich, some lettuce. <laughs> hey! Sometimes in a week they can import something like 30,000 heads of lettuce from the US. It's crazy. Here I want to talk to you about a project that we've actually developed at Department 22. This is one of our recent projects, which is called Walter H5, and it allows people to grow food in their homes all year round, inside or, or outside on their balcony or in their garden. Next, I'm going to look at protein. In this case, it's chicken. We can have, you know, all sorts of protein sources in our sandwiches. Chicken is one of the most common ones, and actually in the UK we eat about 2.2 million chickens every day. What is the problem with that? Well, actually, here I don't want to talk about the problem of chickens themselves, but actually what the chickens eat. Feed for chickens is soy, which is great. It's easy to grow. It can grow in many places, and we then feed it to chickens. But the problem is we need a lot of land for that. So what we do is we cut down forests, sometimes beautiful rainforest like the Amazon. And the issue with that, apart from cutting down beautiful nature that we have, is that in, you know, in a rainforest like this, in one square meter, you would have more than a thousand species of plants growing. It's a whole mini ecosystem just in one square meter. But actually, we cut that down, and we have just one crop growing there. That destroys the ecosystem. I want to look at a great solution here of how we can find protein in other sources. And there was a hint, actually, for you at the breakfast here, and Philip mentioned it, looking at insects. <coughs> insects are actually 
really, really efficient in terms of how they, you know, the protein that they produce. Think about it. 20 years ago, who would eat raw fish in the UK? Now we love sushi. Same could happen with insects. This is a project by an, um, a Swedish architecture company called Bella True Architects, Bella True Labs. And they've looked at how we can use infrastructure already existent in cities, such as roundabouts, to build these buildings called buzz buildings and grow insects directly there to feed the whole city. Next on our sandwich is cheese. We've got all sorts of cheese that we eat. Uh, most of it comes from cow's milk. And the issue with cow's milk is mainly the way we produce it now. Most of it is done through intensive farming and it really disconnects us from nature. It disconnects us from understanding where it's made. You know, we have this picture of cows grazing on beautiful grasslands, but that's not really true. Floating farms, in fact, this project is called Floating Farms, which are dairy farms where cows live on the top level and all the milk is pasteurized in the, in the underground level and yogurt is produced there and then actually the cows have access to um, grass pastures outside of um, the raft, so on the <coughs> land. It's not going to solve the problem of dairy, but it will connect us to understanding it better and, and really show what can be done. So this is a sandwich and it's, as you can see, this is this, the issues that I talked about are not specific to this sandwich in particular, or any sandwich or any food. It's a much broader problem. So we're wasting so much food. And if anyone tells you that we're, we're going to struggle to feed the population, the growing population on this planet, that's really, I don't really agree with that. We just need to redesign the way we produce food, the way we consume food and the food systems in order to feed it. It's not that we're going to have lack of food. We just need to make use of, better use of the food that we already have and produce. Just want to finish on one last slide, really to, to emphasize the fact that we, you know, I, I've uncovered some scary truth, but what I really hope you will take away from this is that those inspirational ideas and solutions that people are coming up with, and hopefully this will inspire you to think about food systems and, and solving these issues and how we can create a better world. Thank you.